Hi, I'm Novel Mike, and this is my opinion. Octopath Traveler is a game I really wanted to get into and love. It's a modern game, but with an art style inspired by the 16-bit era. An era that easily is my favorite in all of gaming, and thus it obviously spoke right to my interest from the first time I ever saw it. However, as I played the game, certain things about it kept me from enjoying it, until eventually I really just stopped having fun and I ended up dropping the game entirely. Octopath Traveler begins with you picking one of eight different characters and you jump right into their chapter one of four story. After you complete that first chapter, the game begins to open up in a massive way, allowing you to walk around a very huge portion of the world map right from the get-go, and the game will direct you towards the other seven characters. When you meet one of them, you'll be able to do their own chapter one and they will join you. Eventually you'll recruit all eight characters, and then be able to unlock the rest of each character's story, as well as the job system and other things. The structure of the game being open world gives the player a true sense of freedom that many RPGs fail to pull off. You can do any chapter in any order as long as you are high enough leveled for that given area. It allows you to really take the game at your own pace, allowing you to really forge your own path as you play. Although with that said, each additional new chapter generally has a steep level requirement, which either forces you to grind or you can do other characters' current chapters before moving on to a character's second, third, or final chapters. It eventually feels more forced than I think it should, with the game clearly wanting you to do everyone's chapter 1s, 2s, then 3s, and 4s, and not just knock out a single character story all in one go. It takes away a bit from the freedom I feel like the game was trying very hard to give you. While it's not impossible to jump to the later chapters via grinding, it's obviously not the intended way you are meant to progress. This ultimately leads to the biggest problem I had with the game. Repetition. Almost everything in the game is fun and new at first, but by the time I was 40 hours into the game and moving on to characters chapter 3 stories, I began to feel rather frustrated by the entire structure of the game because I was doing the same things over and over again. While the stories for each character can be hit and miss, they all generally follow the exact same setup. You arrive at a new town, you meet two groups of people, some good people and some bad people, the bad people do bad things to the good people, and you help out the good people by using your path actions and generally invading the area of the bad person and fighting and defeating them, which saves the good people. Almost every chapter plays out in the same way, and when you're having to do eight of them in a row, it gets to you after a while. It wouldn't be so bad if this wasn't a problem with every element of the game. All the dungeons end up being small mazes with branching paths just leading to treasure, with generally a boss at the very end. All the towns generally start by you using your various path actions to steal or buy items, as well as getting information and various hints from characters, and challenging a few to get past blocked doors. Even the battle system, which I loved early on, eventually devolves in use, into using attacks that hit all enemies to discover their weaknesses, and then breaking all enemies at the same time, with you finishing them all off at once with stocked up BP attacks. Every single fight can be handled this way, including bosses. While I know there are later challenges that offer some more variety, the middle of the game had me doing this over and over again, and eventually I just couldn't take it anymore. To be clear, I don't actively hate Octopath Traveler. I think there's a lot to like about the game, and if you can either ignore or aren't bothered by the repetitive design, I think there's a lot to like about it. But for me, I could not get past it, and because of that, I ended up dropping the game and really have no intention of going back. That's one reason this review is coming rather late. I've tried to pick up the game again multiple times, but the repetitive design really frustrates me, because there are elements of the game that I did like, but there just isn't enough variety in the gameplay to keep me interested. If you have a Switch, I still think the game is worth checking out for most people. If the game had a stronger characters or story, I likely would have found a way to keep myself interested. While the characters and their stories were fairly generic and are all hits and misses, but I found far more misses than I was originally expecting. I had hoped that they might eventually update the game and fix some of my complaints, like Monolith Soft did for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. But so far, there hasn't been a word from Square Enix about any future plans for the game. So, as it is now, it's an interesting experience and offers a greater sense of freedom than many games, but it's an imperfect experiment, one that I just couldn't keep myself interested in. I'm Novel Mike, and that was my opinion. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.